Hey everybody, Rich here, Rich's Custom Marine and Auto. Introduced you guys to this car a little while ago. This is a 2007 Ford Focus. It's got the 2.0 Duratec. It's uh, in need of a clutch. Um, at least that's what we're thinking. From what I've researched on this, these have a dual mass flywheel which can become a pretty significant problem and now it's pretty easy to buy a kit that has the single mass flywheel, old school type flywheel. So uh, I'm going to take you guys along and we're going to do a clutch job on this car. Alright, so this is a little different than the older style front wheel drives where you generally could just remove the lower ball joint and tie rod ends get the half shafts out and have room so in this particular car you need a special tool uh, you could probably get away with using a, a cherry picker engine lift but you're gonna have to be under the car and on top at different times so even Harbor Freight sells these there's a bar that'll go across here that sits on the rails and then that supports the engine in place because in this car, you have to take the lower K member, the frame underneath, that whole thing has to come off, and that's got your engine mounts on it, transmission mounts, and stuff like that. So that's why you need that bar, is it basically suspends your engine in place, and then you can get everything else out of the way, get the transmission off. So that's how this works. We're going to go ahead now, we'll get the air box and air intake tube off, and we're going to get the battery tray out of the, out of the way up here. Keep in mind, guys, that this car has sat for, uh, I don't know, I've been told everywhere from a year to four to five years, so I don't know, it sat for a while. I will tell you that when I hooked a battery up to it, the engine fired right up and sounded really good. So, you guys, if it's your daily driver... Your stuff may come apart a little easier is why I tell you that. There we go. So, this air box, it just has those two bolts there, and then that's just grease, but it's got this little deal that pops in in the bottom. So, once you get your hose off, then uh, that's not actually your air filter either. That's just a, uh, a silencer so you don't hear. Also has a little deal here that tells you what the status of the filter is. So, usually see those on big rigs and buses and tractors and stuff like that. 
like that. But that's kind of cool. Did go ahead and get a throttle body gasket for this because I thought the throttle body may need to be clean. It's just assuming that it probably does. And it's just generally four volts and a connector. I'm assuming this little Ford will likely everything on it will be metric. some mice in this car but it doesn't actually look like that bad so I'm not happy about that. Okay so you got three studs there and then there was a bolt that went right there. I just tried to put my hardware with the piece. That way, when you go to put everything back together, you're not wondering what hardware goes where. Next we get this thing up in the air and we start working on the bottom. Alright everybody, I just want to take you through where I'm at so far. So you can see I got the bar on here that supports the engine. Um, because of where these eyelets are on the engine, um, I cut these pieces of channel and I bolted them to the bar. That way, I was going to try and just use the chains that came with this support bar, but it was bending those ears inward, so I had to come up with something different. So we've got that done. We have pulled 
the axle nuts. One of the first things it has you do is remove the steering shaft bolt. So that way when you go to lower this K member down that uh, coupling will slide apart. So we did that and we have disconnected that one might be hard to show you we've disconnected the shift linkage yep I don't think we're gonna be able to show you that one but uh, they are actually pretty easy to remove uh, there's a button on the back side you push in and then they pop right off the little ball that they're on so that's where we're at so far and we're going to keep taking this thing apart. So next you got to get this out of the way. This is the transmission mount that comes right underneath where the battery sat. So um, you've got the nuts that go on here and then you've got the nut that goes on there and then when that plate sits down in there there's a bolt here and a bolt there. And then you've got all these wire stays that have to come off, this one, so that that plate will come out of the way. So, uh, all right, we're going to continue on here. Okay, guys, so you've got to get this bolt. Hard to see. It's down there next to that cone-shaped nylon-looking piece. It's right in the middle of the screen there. You've got to get that loose. That's the power steering line clamp and what that does is when you go to lower the cradle then this is not attached. It's not attached to it in any way. The other thing you've got to do is so right right there you can see that grommet that is popped up out of the bracket, you've got to release that as well for the same reason. And next we've got to get those two connectors. You can see the kind of gray and blue ones down there. And then the bracket that's right there next to them, that's got to come off. Uh, those connectors are for the oxygen sensors. Um, and then that bracket kind of is a C-channel type of clamp that holds over the bell housing area, so that's why you've got to get it out of the way. All right, now we're gonna pull, you can see I've got the two bolts loose down there. We're gonna pull this bracket off, and then, let's see, there's the other bolt back in there. So we'll get that off and continue on. All right, so next we took the tie rod ends loose. So uh, these are 15 millimeter socket, you take this off, um, you can put a uh, an apex Allen five millimeter, you know, one that's on a socket. You can put that on there, tap it a couple times, and that thing will come right off. This is the sway bar link, so it goes up here. Well, right there. And then the lower ball joint, you gotta take that out. So um, you take out this pinch bolt. Get it to focus. Take out this pinch bolt, um, which goes right there. And then you can take a pry bar and that ball joint I won't say it pulls right out of there because you got to keep the angle just right um, and then it'll come out so you do that on both sides so next thing we're going to do is we're going to we're going to remove the power steering lines off the steering rack and then we're going to get ready to lower the cave member down okay everybody want to give you a little look at what we're doing underneath. So we've pulled this 
roll preventer. We got the bolts out of it. Um, just one there, and then one underneath, and then uh, get this light somewhere where right in the center there. That's the bolt we're going to pull out and get the lines out of the way for our steering rack. And then we've got two little bolts to take out. So that would be one of the little ones. And then we've got the one, two, three, four. And then there should be, yep. And then there is the little bolt for that side. So, um, before you, obviously before you go to lower this K member down, you want to make sure you've got a jack underneath it. Um, it's going to have maybe even two jacks. Um, it's going to have a pretty good amount of weight to it being steel and it's going to be awkward. So. You definitely want to have a jack underneath that thing so you can lower it and then you get that thing down out of the way and then you can actually get to start removing the half shafts and stuff like that to get this thing apart all right folks we got the power steering lines draining there into our pan and uh we're gonna look here so there's our forward bolts we've got a nice access here in the control arm and then we'll get our rear bolts out and keep moving on all right let's see how this key member deal goes here i'll try letting it down just real easy your side a little bit. sure the steering shaft is disconnected inside like it's supposed to.
got steering shaft disconnected. I just had to tap on that coupling a little bit and then it came right out. Okay, we definitely got our balance off here. Wasn't sure where the balance point was on this K member. When they do this job at the dealership, they've got a framework they actually set this thing up on. And with that framework, it's got balance point and everything, all the important stuff that you need to know. Those of us out here working in the garage, we don't have that. All right, that looks that looks fairly well balanced. Let's uh, go ahead and lower it down some more. We got something here hanging us up. Oh, I think it might be our. Yep, it's our block the cars on. Okay, no problem. Got it cleared. Everything else is looking good. Our steering lines and everything are all looking good. It looks like my balance is off some here. Oh yeah. It's not super heavy guys, you just gotta be be careful, be safe.
sure why we're leaking power steering fluid there, but as I can see, nothing's hanging. Everything looks great. Should be able to put this dude forward. I gotta get it to clear this transmission though. Alright guys, there it is, so we'll just, uh, we'll get this bad boy pulled back here out of the way so we can get in there and get that transmission out. Okay, let me give you guys an update on where we're at here, so um, we have... We have the transmission out. So, those little chunks down in there, that's rubber, so I don't have the flywheel off yet, as you can see, and it's been hot, somebody's been slipping the clutch quite a bit, uh, but that, I feel like that dual mass flywheel probably came apart and is what's causing all of our issues here, so, uh, but some tips here when you go to get that transmission out it's a little bit of a bugger um, you will need to lower this side of the engine um, if, you, if we stand back here you might be able to see there's a little bit of an angle there um, that's to be able to get clearance and you'll have to flex this back might be just easier to take that out, but you've got to get around that frame rail right there and you've got to watch that brake line. So, uh, but once you lower that engine down, like I showed you, um, you can kind of work that transmission towards the side over here and then it'll start to disengage and then you'll be able to lower this side of the transmission with your transmission jack just a little bit more and then it'll come out of there so and then you can set it down on the ground um, so we're gonna go ahead and get that dual mass flywheel off of there like we talked about previously and we'll put a single mass in there and we'll figure out if that flywheel is good or not um, yeah I feel like that's not good so um, we're going to get that swapped out and then we'll come over here and we'll switch out the throw out bearing and the slave cylinder. It's an assembly. If you guys have never worked on a Ford, um, they do that as a combination deal. And that's also part of our, our clutch kit in there. wanted to show everybody too so you can see the the heat marks 
on that pressure plate and this thing has really been slipped so um, that pressure plate is it's been hot and then the clutch itself the disc so you can kind of see there I don't know if I can get you guys a good angle here but you can see it's almost worn to the rivets and uh, same thing on this side so this is a sax I believe is how they say that so I kind of noticed working on this car that it's been worked on before and you know that's not to be totally unexpected for a 2007 you know it's a 16 year old car so but uh, nothing bad you know I've seen some really bad stuff previously on other vehicles but this one you could just kind of tell that that it had been worked on but that is a aftermarket clutch for sure um, I don't know if you can get it in parts stores but I know that Rock Auto carries that brand and uh, nothing wrong with Saks um, we've actually my brother-in-law's Corvette race car we've used clutch slave cylinder and master cylinder from Rock Auto being a Saks so uh, seems to work fine but uh, just a little hint there that it's been changed before. Okay everybody, I just want to go over here for those of you that are not familiar. I know a lot of you are, but those of you that aren't familiar with a clutch job. So this is your flywheel. This is the part that's driven by the engine, okay? We just talked about this a minute ago, but you'll see it says right on here, flywheel side, okay? That's because this sticks out. So if you were to put this like this and you put your pressure plate on there, that wouldn't work out real well. So, so that rides on there. And then your pressure plate here, sits like that, right, with your bolts around it. So now, when this is completely bolted down, it'll actually pull these fingers in some. Um, with no pressure on these fingers by the throwout bearing that's in the transmission over there, that's what the car is like when you're driving. That's the engaged position. When you push in on the clutch pedal, it pushes on these fingers, right? These are a fulcrum point in here, and it takes the tension off, moves this back, and lets the clutch actually slip, like so, right? So, anyways, that's how that works. So, you can see all the dust that's on everything. There's, uh rubber dust everywhere so this thing yeah you probably saw that this thing it's uh, it's shot so the purpose of a dual mass flywheel is just simply to have rubber down in between the two pieces of the flywheel and it's just a shock absorber, if you will. Picture that in your mind for when you engage the clutch or disengage the clutch. It makes everything a little bit smoother. Or if you're, say, idling along in traffic in first gear and you accelerate, you don't get a, jerk, a jerky takeoff. This will kind of dampen that out. So that's all great, um, except when they fail like this. So... Um, the more, in my mind, traditional clutch disc, which I'll show you here.
So this is a more traditional clutch disc, okay? And you can see these dampener springs that are inside the hub there. And you can see that one, the original clutch, it doesn't have those, it's got a solid hub. So in this system, of course, the flywheel does the dampening. And in this system, which has been around since, gosh, who only knows? I mean, maybe the 1930s, 1940s, something like that. 50s, I'm not sure. Somebody can let me know in the comments there. But these do the same thing as far as damping when you're engaging a disengaging clutch. So, but... Uh, all right, we're going to, uh, we've got our, I'll show this to you guys as well. We've got our new flywheel there, one-piece flywheel. And it is a big, thick sucker, which is good. So, these all come, they're kind of like brake discs. These all come with a preservative on them, preservative. So you'll want to use brake clean, clean them off really good, and uh, make sure everything's all, all clean. So this, kind of hard to see, but this is our new This is our new flex plate. So, obviously just a little different design, but same, same exact idea, right? So, and then this, this is our throw out bearing. And uh, like I said, we'll get to that when we get over to the transmission there. For right now, we're going to get this flywheel up there and installed. Uh, one other thing I want to share with you is these bolts for this car, they're a, uh, I call them a reverse Torx, but they're a, they're a star pattern. So you can kind of see that there. Um, you do need the specific socket. So, it's an E14, so, um, again, that's something that you can actually get at Harbor Freight, a set of those, if you wanted, um, but I don't recommend you trying to pull those bolts off of there with a regular six-point or 12-point socket or anything like that. Um, you Those... I'm not sure what the torque is on those yet. I'm sure it's probably 80 or so foot-pounds. Um, I can tell you they were doggone tight when they came off of there. So just make sure you have the right socket, guys, and, and you're doing things right. Okay, everybody, we got the flywheel up there. I hope you guys all understand that uh, I can't really get the camera up in there and have me in there as well, so hence the little choppy little bits here but uh, I want to try and get you all the information possible so those bolts there's a three-step torque process for them you want to torque them well the mechanical term is diametrically opposed um, crisscross pattern and that seats everything nice and flat but you want to torque them all to 37 foot-pounds and then go back over them at 50 foot-pounds and then finally torque them again at 83. So you also want to put, these had red Loctite on them and of course you always want to make sure you start with clean bolts so took them over to the to the wire wheel, cleaned up all of the old Loctite off of there so that we had fresh threads and uh, got them up in there and torqued. So, um, I'm going to try and get you guys set up to be able to see when I do this throw-out bearing over here. 
throw up bearing and slave cylinder. All right, let's get this clutch slave cylinder throw up bearing combination out of here. that you can see that's the seal for the main shaft there in the transmission actually looks pretty gummed up there so not real sure if this was working properly but the new one comes in your clutch kit you do a clutch job on any vehicle, you want to do clutch throw out bearing, pressure plate, and then depending on the make, it may have a pilot bearing or a pilot bushing up inside the, the crankshaft or the flywheel, depending on the, the make. This particular setup does not have a pilot bushing or a pilot bearing and some of you might be thinking no you're you got to be wrong they all do well I'll just share this with you guys there's no snout on the end of this shaft for a pilot bearing or pilot bushing Take out our new assembly here. Do want to put a little bit of oil on this seal. And this has got a it's got a nice O-ring there for it to seal into the housing. So, carefully push this over the splines, and then it should pop into place, just like that. I'm going to put a little bit of blue Loctite on these. These did have Loctite from the factory. It was kind of a whitish Loctite. Not really sure what that indicates. What I will tell you is you definitely don't want to have to take go through this whole process over again to take this apart because you had those bolts loosen up or back out. So now I'm just going to run these down evenly by hand. Torque spec on these is 89 inch pounds. We got our torque wrench all set up here.
I don't know if you guys will be able to see that, but yep, there it is. 89. Okay. All right, guys, so that's how we do that. Obviously, there's some debris down in there and stuff. Um, I'm going to clean that up before I go trying to put this thing back up in there. But, uh, nice. Way better than the other one. So, we'll get this thing cleaned up and we'll get all lined up to start putting our, uh, actually next we're going to put our clutch disc and pressure plate on there. So we'll do that. Okay everybody, transmission is back in place. Um, hard mounted as we used to call it back when I worked on helicopters. So uh, we've got all the bolts in that attach the transmission to the engine, bell housing bolts if you will. So this thing went back in there easier than it actually came out, which kind of surprised me quite a bit. The key is, as we talked about before, is having the driver's side of the engine down a little bit lower and then you'll be able to you'll be able to clear this brake line a little easier and the frame and then this this little splash shield will just pull out of your way so having a second person makes it significantly easier um, what I did is I got everything all settled and then just my wife came out and helped me um, I just had her run the jack, the transmission jack, and, uh, you know, up a little bit, down, up a little bit, up a little bit, and then we did have to rotate the crankshaft just a little bit with the balancer bolt, and then it just popped right in. We got it aligned on the, the dowels, and then got the bolts in. So, uh... We're going to continue on getting this thing put back in here. All right, everybody, want to give you a little bit of a tip here. So sometimes getting these axles to snap back into the transaxle there can be a bit of a bear. Um, one trick is the snap ring that's on the end of the spline shaft. Just put a little bit of grease on there. It's not going to hurt anything, but it'll hold that snap ring centered. And uh, it, it won't get sideways on you and, and block you trying to get it in. The other thing you can see I did is you can put a hose clamp on there. Get your axle shaft pushed in there up against the snap ring. Put a whole bunch of pressure back here right where the end of this is. Then you can take your hammer. You don't want to beat on it, but you want to tap on it. You can see where I tapped on it here. And... I think it was three times and it went clunk and went right in and locked in place. So just want to share that little tip with you. Um, on the other axle, which is right there, you can see there is not a snap ring because it has a center bearing that's pressed in place and that holds the shaft there. So you don't have to worry about it on that one. All right. We've got the clamp on, those power steering lines down there. That thing is a bugger, guys. Yeah, best way I found to do it. This is one of those things that I don't think a lift will help you with. Uh, best way I found to do it is just come up from the, come down from the top, reach down in there, um, just lay across. Be careful of your harness and stuff like that. But you can get down in there. Uh, this, that's the setup I ended up using because it's a five and a half millimeter, um, but got that bugger in there. Uh, another thing, so the procedure doesn't really cover it too well in my opinion. Um, I had the wire harness all hooked up 
for the O2 sensors and I kind of had some interference here with this hard line there we go with that hard line and the counterweight down there for the shift assembly so what had happened was when you pull this transmission out of here uh, all of this engine harness stuff will obviously come down. Um, I had zip tied mine up up here, uh, but it still didn't let me get everything back exactly where it was supposed to be. So um, I was running into issues where my connectors back here for the O2 sensors which go on that plate right there you can see those white tabs the harness was too short and I was trying to figure out how in the world because could the harness be too short well when all of this harness fell down it got wrapped over the top of that hard line and all of that has to go underneath the hard line and then this so these two connectors here they go right there um, but what I'm trying to get down here to show you is they tell you to unbolt that bolt right there in the middle of the screen and take that bracket off because obviously part of that harness stays here while the transmission comes out. So um, just something when you're going to put this thing back together um, that harness bracket has to go under the hard line and then you can get that bolt back in there and get it get it torqued down and be able to keep moving on. Um, other things we got done, which can't really see a whole lot in here, but uh, there's the shift linkage reinstalled, and then I don't know if we'll be able to see the back one. You can kinda, nope, not able to see it. So we're gonna go ahead and get these connectors hooked up. And, uh, oh, and of course the big deal is we have the upper engine support is no longer there because we've got our transmission mount in place. So um, once we get those harness connectors hooked up, then we should be able to go ahead and put this bracket back on. That's the support for the battery. And then of course the battery box will go on over the top of that. Um, we also pulled the steering shaft bolt out inside, put a little blue Loctite on it, put that bad boy back in. So uh, that thing is good to go. And coming along, we're making, we're making good progress. Yep, that guy right there. So, we're uh, getting ready to, like I said, put that tray back in. We'll be able to put the air box back in. Um, I do have a gasket that I bought for the throttle body. And you can see my, my method of covering the throttle body, um, I recommend you do something, put paper towels in there, put something. And the blade is closed, but there's still passages that you can get dirt in and other stuff like that. And with as much as you're going to be moving around here, uh, trust me guys, you're going to want to cover that up. 
but I do have a gasket so I'm gonna pull that throttle body off I'll do that separately after I get done with this transmission job um, but I that's actually gonna be part of the tune-up I have I have a set of spark plugs for this oil and filter and then the throttle body gasket so um, a few things we'll have left to do is we need to bleed the clutch and so that is a process that might require some special tools so I'm not sure if we can get you in there to see that Kinda. So, anyways, we got to get into that bleeder, and the the shop manual procedure for doing that is you actually push fluid from that bleeder back up through to the the clutch reservoir. So, um, you got to make sure you take draw a little bit of fluid out of the clutch reservoir which shouldn't be an issue because we lost some of course when we took it apart so and then the other thing we'll have to do because of having the K member out with the steering rack on it is we'll have to bleed the power steering system so um, which also is a special procedure on this car where you um, you put a vacuum bleeder on the reservoir cap um, and it helps this guy right here and it helps pull the uh, pull the air out of the system you do that and you turn the wheels left and right and it should pull the air out then they have you start it turn it all the way to the right but not against the stop turn it all the way to the left not against the stop and then you take all your equipment off and turn the wheels and if you don't have any abnormal noise it'll be pretty loud and pronounced if you've still got air in the system um, if you do have air you got to go through that process again so um, anyways making progress we're trucking along here and we're going to keep on going okay i'm going to save you guys a little bit of time from making the mistake i made um, i went to put this bracket on which is also this um, I already had this mount installed as you guys had seen previously well this as you can see goes on top uh, I saw that by the markings on there so um, it was an easy fix for me just put a transmission under the jack pull this bolt out I didn't even have these run down yet so uh, but just want to save you a little bit of time there guys when you go to put this thing back together, um, this bracket goes on. Then you can put your mount in. Now we've got our our battery box here, which I've cleaned all up. It might be kind of hard to see down in there. studs lined up and then work this harness through there yeah. and then we got we're all set up there and then uh, we've got this harness so let's see if you guys can see Right in the center of the screen, those two little holes there, and then you've got the pins on this harness that go into that, like so. 
Perfect. So now we've got our two bolts here. One goes in there. And these are a 10 millimeter head. And then we've got the one that goes in here. And then we have these guys. We've got the other two. And then this one might be a bit of a challenge. Yep. Dropped it. So I'm going to have to do that off camera so that I can get down in there and get what I need to be done. So uh, um, also did a little bit of bleeding on the clutch. Suspecting maybe a bad master cylinder right now because... I bled the snot out of it and I'm not getting any pedal feel so uh, when I can get a helper I'm gonna do the old school open the bleeder have them push the pedal real slow and see if it's even moving any fluid if it isn't then I'm gonna be replacing it there is some signs inside um, possibly Maybe it was leaking brake fluid. Because um, you can see some rust. So I wasn't really going to be too overly concerned about that because the car did sit for some time. Uh, but it sat in a valley where it's pretty dry so but I mean you look underneath here and there's there is some rust on some other stuff so it's possible that it's okay but uh, we'll have to do some more troubleshooting to figure out